Welcome to Lean Made Simple, a podcast for people who want to transform their business and their lives one step at a time. Today we're at the Two Second Lean Summit where Matt got to sit down with Brendan McGurgan and Claire Colvin for a really interesting podcast and we really hope you enjoy the episode. Lean provides headspace. When you're not giving energy to having to think about all the little mundane tasks in your day-to-day role, it actually frees you to unlock the greatest potential that exists within people, and that's our creative faculty. As David Jennings says, processes and systems will set you free. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? This is just so, so cool. I have a prop, actually. Let me see this. Oh, Sit wow. down. Look at wow. this. Wow. <laughs> Anybody's listening on audio, I'm holding up a really, really great book. This is a book that is on two second lean level. This should be in the library for all of your lean learnings. These guys, Brandon and Claire from Simple Scaling, have developed this unbelievable system for 10x in businesses and it's businesses in every industry you could possibly imagine. And so, really delighted to have you both here today. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having Thank us, Matt. Thank you so much, and Matt. And the book's not yet dog-eared enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the cool thing. This is a brand new copy that I lifted because I know you guys have brought a, a bunch of stuff for all this, the guys here at the summit. So. Indeed. Yes. And we say just don't read the material, be the material. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. So I'm really curious how you guys both came across Lean and how you guys now use that as one of the tools in your in your tool belt for helping uh, scale companies. So... Claire? Yeah, well, um, for anybody who's read the book, you'll quickly see that our ScaleX framework is made up of 10 different principles. And one of those principles is all around process. And uh, what's really important is, you know, process is typically one of those areas where business leaders know process are important but it just falls down to the bottom of their priority list. Mm. And therefore the processes are nor defined or allocated or optimized. And what typically happens then is the leader uh, ends up really getting sucked into the business. uh, And it gets to a point where it grows and the leader just cannot extract themselves from the business. So Mm. uh, our approach around uh, that principle is actually twofold. Uh, Lean is is the second half of what we do within that particular uh, workshop and that principle. And we're big believers that with process, you really need to define Mm. what your end to end processes are first before you can see whether, you know, the the people know what they're doing, before you can see whether you've got waste, duplication, uh, almost before you can optimise. So we did it in two halves. Uh, again, not lean related, but very similar. Yeah. Uh, we uh, talk about a framework called systemology. Uh, and again, that helps business leaders to understand what are the critical end to end processes, right from how do we get the attention of our customers right through to the end in terms of how do we ensure that they come back for more <laughs> and everything in between. And then once those are defined, Lean is a beautiful vehicle for uh, taking those and actually stripping it out and making it the best that it can be. That's great. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm hearing you say is there's no sense in two second Lean and imp- uh, improvements and processes that shouldn't even be there in the first place or totally absolutely, broken. Absolutely. Crazy. Yes. Did we, we in through Acres or Tierney or? Yeah. You know, so there's, there's Lean and then there's, and then there's Lean Lean. Well, it's, it's, it's really interesting because you know, our background, my background is almost 20 years in manufacturing. And my first coming to hear of Lean was the understanding that you had to have this super duper mega degree. You had to go away to Lean School. You come back, you were Six Sigma black belt or green belt or blue belt, <laughs> uh, that you did all this stuff called essing and that actually I wasn't clever enough at all to, to understand that you had to be super duper qualified and you were then appointed to do this Lean thing uh, out on this manufacturing floor. It was only whenever I discovered having left our previous business, I retired from the business after 17 years, I discovered Paul Aker's work mm. and hosted the, uh, through hosting the ScaleX Insider podcast, I became fascinated with his two second lean, which wasn't what I understood lean to be at all. Right. It was simply about fixing what bugs you. And in that language, that just had me hooked. That makes so much sense. And the concept of two second lean, yes. just, you know, that that if you see something that's bugging you, 
just fix it. You didn't mm. need to spend 10 years qualifying as this black belt uh, <laughs> in this kind of thing that nobody could understand but was going to revolutionize your factory floor. It was actually a th- something that you could integrate into your own life yeah. and actually then bring it into your own business. But so that I it started with Paul Akers, believe it or not, and Paul said, Do you know do you know the Tierneys? <laughs> I and I couldn't understand him. Uh, it, I missed it. Tierney to uh, 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 seating matters and I'd never heard of seating really? matters. Yeah, I said, he's 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 yeah, like, what, what are you saying? I, I, I kind of went with it. <laughs> I'd go, yeah, yeah, seat. I uh, no I, I couldn't un- understand even seating matters. I what know. is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that a Japanese term? And he said, Yeah, they're you know, they're based in Ireland. These guys are smashing it. <laughs> and I said, Right, okay, Ryan, he's smashing it so I uh, connected with Ryan then through LinkedIn so it was actually I had to go to the other side of the world so funny. for a guy to introduce me to, to a guy that lives down the road who Fun. is absolutely smashing yeah. lean and so you know what Paul Akers has done is he's made lean scalable so as you say you don't have to go and do get the 10 year black belt thing <laughs> And we just got back from the factory tour at Seaton Matters and we saw Lean at scale. Every single person has such a strong grasp of it. They're explaining, you know, what would seemingly be very complicated principles just to still down into five-year-old language. It's really, really powerful. 100%. And what you see actually, the focus of Lean is actually a focus on people. Hmm. You know, back to Claire's, you know, the essence of Claire's being is we don't build businesses, we build people and people mm. build businesses. That's the essence of lean. Like we have witnessed this morning, you know, Jenny and Beverly, ladies in, you know, ma- let's say mature lady- ladies that could be my mum, yeah. who are hosting people from all across the world mm-hmm. and articulating in a really relatable way what lean means mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. them. And in fact, a lot of the times they don't, you know, it's not a, about using the lean concept because I think the word lean actually puts people off. It's sure. that, you know, yeah. fix what bugs you. You know, the answer should be where the question is asked. Leave it better than you found it. Uh-huh. You know, and everybody gets that. Yeah. I, th- I think that's, I think you've put, you know, the nail, uh, got the nail on the head there because it's one of the biggest misconceptions of lean mm-hmm. is that people go in thinking it's all about process where actually we learned very quickly whenever we first came up here in the tour is that uh, in fact was it Paul that said it this morning somebody said this morning lean improves people's lives Yeah, you know what person wants to come into an organisation where You know, you're told what to do. You're micromanaged by your manager. You can't find anything. You know, the team's frustrated and falling out and kind of boxing each other because uh, things don't work smoothly. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, yeah, you know, we we, 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 on the tour this morning, you know, we saw the two Kyles. We saw Cody and (laughs) we Kyle and big Kyle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Cody and Jack as well. And you can. You know, it's it's um, it's it's lovely to see the personal development side. Yeah. Uh, but again, I think what comes with lean is the association with process. Yeah. And 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 it you know and Paul, I've got to say, and the Tierneys are doing a great job mm. at changing that misconception. But okay. uh, it's so much wider than that. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Jack. I thought Jack spoke brilliantly. Yeah. And it was amazing to see Jack just owning the room there. You know, yeah. you had 16 people from all over the world, as you were saying, it's and he's there communicating thing. and he's leading morning meetings and everything. Very, yeah. very cool. And, and you've got the Chloe 27, Shamey, oh, you know, uh, who, who lives nice. down the road. Yeah. Shamey's articulating what lean means. And I, and this is something that just wraps it up for me. Lean provides headspace. Hmm. And when you have that headspace, when you're not giving energy to having to think about all the little mundane tasks in your day-to-day role, it actually frees you to unlock the greatest potential that exists within people. And that's our creative faculty. You know, yeah. it's, it's the, our imaginative creative faculty is what distinguishes us from all other mammals. Absolutely. As David Jennings says, processes and systems will set you free. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Totally. So you guys run this phenomenal program, this accelerator. Thank you. And you take, you know, uh, SMEs in, you take their leaders and you help them 10x their business. And one of the things you do as part of that program is you take these people up to see Seaton Matters. Now, not everyone is in manufacturing. Some, the, As we said at the top of the show, totally different industries selling all, all sorts of products. What effect do you see on the people inside your program when they come and they see 
lean in action and seating matters. I think that's so critically important. The it's one of the the concepts of lean in terms of teaching lean is show don't tell. Mm. So we can talk about what lean is, but actually when people through that workshop are being immersed in in what it is, you know, in reality on the factory floor, in the finance function, one of the questions that always gets asked is, well, lean is something that is the domain of manufacturing businesses. Mm -hmm. It doesn't apply to my business, my business service business, you know, of a big finance function, whatever. And it just applies to every corner of a business. And when you can show people that, you know, that is really, really impactful. And then the teaching that's wrapped around that, all the concepts that we've been speaking about, then the, the penny drops. Mm. I, I think in addition to what you're saying there, you know, applying to every uh, industry is really important. I think as well, one of the things that they learn, again, being up at Seating Matters, is the change starts with them as individuals. <laughs> And one of the exercises we ask them to do, because you asked the impact of the programme, and uh, one of the things that we ask people to do is to identify 10 two-second improvements that the leader can take whenever they go back into their business oh, the following day. On. So instantly they're starting to think about it. And Most the, the, valuable homework ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, you know, they're, they're onto the second page because they, they know it and they see it and they recognise that actually the change starts with them. Yeah, yeah. it's something... I know you've had Tom Hughes on and Tom talks about improvement starts with I mm -hmm. and something certainly as a parent that I've come to recognize and I wish I'd learned it way back as opposed to now the fact that I've old teenagers, but is the CAM process or the CAM methodology of parenting, which is communicate, advise, listen and model mm. and model being the most impactful. Wow. So the question we get asked the most and the question that's most asked of the Tierneys when we bring people here on the tour is, uh, how do I implement this? The implementation starts with the eye. It starts with them wow. modeling the behavior. And that can be as simple as going back into the next day and mm. clearing up their desk. So the next meeting they have when somebody comes in, they go, oh, something's different in here. Yeah. What, what, what have you done? Oh. I've decided that the, the the layout of this table and the mess that's in front of me is really bugging me mm -hmm. and I've just fixed it. Yeah. And it's interesting because I've heard you say loads of times on your podcast and keynotes and, and all that sort of stuff that the biggest factor that holds somebody back from scaling is themselves. So it's mm -hmm. the it's the mindset of the leader and the fact that the the approach to the two second lean approach is all about leading from the front. It's starting internally and that kind of ripples out. The greatest barrier to scaling is unchallenged limiting beliefs. And that creates a barrier from where I could be to where I am now. Mm -hmm. And the belief is that this is the responsibility of somebody else, yeah, not the responsibility of me. And that ultimately, until you actually start to self-reflect and to become aware that whilst you may have been the igniter, the creator of this company, you're now the potential impediment, choking the potential of the company because you're not prepared to change. Mm. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And quite often our participants will see that at some point along the programme and it could be halfway through you know, the 12 month programme, but they then start to uh, understand the their impact and their role on the whole journey. Yeah, great. I yeah. mean, final question and just from both of you, I'd love to know, like for somebody listening or watching to this, you know, maybe they've heard about lean, maybe they've just started it, maybe they've hit their first slump and they're kind of falling off the bandwagon a wee bit. You know, what would you say to those leaders who maybe need a little bit of encouragement or uh, a little bit of guidance for what, what a good action step would be? Um, f from my point of view, I was having this conversation just with some uh, folks over lunch. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, there's probably a couple of things here. You know, if you're thinking about starting your lane journey, you know, we, we would come on tours here quite regularly. And one of the most common questions we get asked is, where do I start? Mm. And, um, you know, there's a wonderful concept of the morning meeting, which gets people really engaged. But sometimes it can be quite uh, a quite a severe change almost and maybe get um, maybe not get the buy in that you initially want. And um, 
many of the the lean fanatics that we're speaking to have uh, WhatsApp groups where yeah. they just start to drop in little improvements, record videos, get people engaged to almost start that the snowball forming uh, before they uh, really, um, I, I guess, really get more in depth in their on their journey. Uh, but in terms of people getting started. You know, think of all the things within your business. You know, you've got to make it real. Think of all the things within your business that frustrate the life out of you and ask yourself, could something like Lean help to fix a lot of those frustrations? And chances are the answer will be yes. Awesome. It's it's absolutely, uh, you know, we, 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 we're here in a room with 200 people who are all talking about how it is, it's a game changer. It has changed their businesses, like big manufacturing companies. So Phenomenal. Yeah, I would encourage people to reflect on whether they want to call it lean or not, because lean comes with loads of connotations like I had that makes you think that you have to be university qualified in something that is an absolute specialism. Mm -hmm. When the reality is it's simply at its core about fixing what bugs you. And I would start with listing out, like Claire has referenced, 10 things that bug you and you fix those 10 things don't don't um, don't, don't outsource them it them off. Yeah, no yeah. no there and you say, go, Daniel, you yeah, I was at, young man. <laughs> I was at this lean summit and you're doing this and this and this and this start with start you know if, every week and it doesn't have to be 10 things you know start off with 3 for the next 4 weeks and just start to systematically work through those and you will you will be asked questions about what you're doing and simply reflect or simply relay back that you're fixing what bugs you. Mm -hmm. Alongside that, you might want to share the podcast that you guys have already produced. Everybody's on WhatsApp nowadays. Sure, the you know the two second lean book is available on you know audio player on WhatsApp. You know, share the reading material and just gently, just kind of start to seep it out there, as opposed to coming in and going. Bang! I've been to this summit yeah. and we're doing lean. <laughs> you know that. And how, how typical will that be? Like, think of all the business leaders out there, and a lot of them, a lot of people back in the workplace, may be thinking, "Oh my gosh, he's at this summit. I'm going to come back with a load of stuff to do afterwards." So your advice is so important. Yeah. It starts with them taking action. And and just to to wrap that up, I mean, it's and it's reflecting that this is a marathon of a series of sprints. It's not a sprint. You're not going to implement Lean today mm -hmm. and see the results next week and then get frustrated if the, those results aren't coming. What we've heard time and time again is this takes time. Yeah. And it's about compounding all of those little two-second improvements that over the course of one month, three months, six months, 12 months, three years, you know, the guys have shared with them, it's six, seven years of, of a journey that they have been on to culminating in what people are seeing now. Yeah. So be patient with it, but be confident that once you start with you, that ultimately you will reap the dividends down the line. Phenomenal. Wow, what a way to end. Absolute zinger at the end. It's like you clearly do a lot of podcasts because you're like, okay, I'm moving in the last 10, 15 seconds. Okay, I need to stick my landing here. Okay, I'm doing a backflip. Okay, here we go, here we go. And boom, double footed. Yeah, we did it. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Thanks really you. appreciate thank it. Uh, thank brilliant. you for listening and watching well as uh, as Book the guy said. Yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, check out some of the other episodes in the back catalog. And uh, where can we find you guys? Your website? www.simplescaling.com Check it out now. Have a good day, guys. <laughs> See you later. Thanks.